Okay, in this video, we're going to go through some of the more basic instructions in Do More Designer. It's laid out much like any other PLC program. And so, again, we have our, some of our most common instructions along here on the bottom. Um, some of them you will not use during this course. And if you're looking for any other that you can't find down here, um, we are going to be using some of the ones here. This one says all in the instruction toolbox. And so we have a comprehensive list of everything that this PLC program can do. So these are the entire set of instructions down here. Um, you've got ones here with core. And again, that's more like your common ones. So it reduces the list down a little bit. So it's easier to find. But if you really want to specifically look for something, go into the all and then check here. But you will find most of yours in core. Okay. So let's um, put some instructions in here. You'll notice that we do have um, hotkeys here so that we can select some of these uh, easier and faster. So if your blue box, wherever this blue box is here, editing box, is going to allow you to put an item there, an instruction. So let's put the first instruction. We'll do a normally open contact here. And it opens up a dialog box. and this is saying if internal bit, which C is, is an internal bit. Um, and again, that's just a software bit. So when this piece of software either registers a zero or a one, it'll have an effect on what this instruction is. So again, that would be coming from some other part of the program, but we'll, uh, we'll see what happens and how we, how we do that in a little bit, what a internal bit does. For now though, let's go with the hardware component um before we actually let's just give it a nickname first of all so we're going to call this switch one and we'll just hit enter and now again it always seems to want to go to this internal bit here but we don't want to associate it with that we want to associate it with a hardware input and so we're going to x uh, zero and you'll notice you can see the range of how many bit addresses you can have in there. So we're going to go with bit zero and we'll hit OK. And now it assigned it. So it gave it a nickname, but it shows you what, what hardware, actual hardware connection is connected to that. So when a switch out in the field that is attached or wired to X zero on the actual PLC, uh, switch one will be activated. Okay, let's just move over here a little bit, give ourselves enough room here, and we'll put um, another switch in, and we'll make this one a normally closed. So hit F3, and again, we're going to give this a nickname switch two, hit our check mark there, and we will assign it another address here x1 and there we have our switches in so now we'll go over to here and we'll assign that as an output and just hit this here and now it pops up the dialog box for an output so again using a nickname um, makes it so much handier when you're looking at what's happening um, because again, it puts it into perspective as to what is actually happening. And this will be handy when you get into larger programs as well. So we're going to call this lamp one and we're going to associate that with what a physical point on the actual PLC. And those are used, the letter Y is used for outputs. So we go Y and we'll go Y zero as our first lamp that would light up. And so now we have two switches here. This switch has to be uh, has to go to a one, so it has to close. And this one has to be open in the field before lamp one will actually activate. Okay. If you're ever curious about what the actual instruction does, if you hover over it, it does tell you exactly what what it's doing. Okay. So this just gives you some extra information. Okay. Now these would be what we refer to as an AND set of instructions here. 
this and this have to be in their their assigned state in order for this to go true. So that's an AND statement. What if we want an OR statement? Well, go right below switch 2 here, and we notice that a, a blue box opens up here. Well, let's hit uh, another F2 there to get us a normally open switch. And we're going to call that switch 3. Hit enter, and we'll assign that as an X2. And there we go. So if we take a look at all their switches, they're all different as address assignments, x0, x1, x2, y0. But you can see this isn't attached to anything. So the instructions that the PLC is going to read through, it follows this gray line through until it gets to there, and then it'll go to the next rung and the next rung. But this isn't attached. It's not even attached over to here. So we got to have to get that attached here. So if you go into your, your instruction toolbox on all, and you scroll down here a bit, you're going to see a wire up. So let's just grab that and put that over there. And then we highlight this again so that it's blue here. And we'll do the exact same thing there. And it will now have the instructions read through. And so when the PLC is scanning through here, it's going to go in both of these directions and see what the state of both of these instructions are and see if it's going to affect our lamp one. OK, so very interesting. Again, this would be a very, very simple program here. Let's uh, take a look at how we could also do something with um, an internal bit. So let's take a, uh, a quick look at our second rung, and let's populate that. So we'll put um, another normally open contact here. And we're going to, again, we're going to assign that um, not as an input, but as an output. And you're probably wondering, well, these normally open or normally close are always associated with input. So it doesn't have to be that way in a PLC program. So this is basically just saying, hey, if, if this is a 1, then this is going to be activated as a 1. And this is looking for a 1. So when, it, when this sees a 1, it's going to go into its true state. So if we follow the logic through and we get you know, a switch closure here and a switch closure here, then this lamp should come on. Then this, if this reads a 1, it's going to say that this is going to write a 1 to this particular normally open contact here. So let's just call that lamp 1. And you'll see that it, in the program, because I've already saved that, it's already in there. And all I have to do is just do that. And it already populates it there. So now let's go to our output coil there and hit that. And we're going to leave that as C0 as an internal bit. So when this external lamp is activated, it's going to write a 1 to here. And it's also going to write a 1 to an internal bit. So we'll just populate that there. And actually, let's edit that. We'll just call that um, in internal bit. I don't think it liked the space in there. OK, so that's our program. So let's uh, accept all that rung edits there. Everything looks good here. We'll go into our do more designer simulator. Open that up there. And hopefully we can move this off to the side enough that we can kind of see what's happening here. Looks like everything. We can see everything. So here's my my associated 16 inputs. And you can see they're all associated with these numbers here. Here is my lamps. And I used, well, maybe I'll just move this over a little bit more. Um, we can see that we've got y0 here, y0 here, and that's where this would be. So if we see this light on, that means that's reading as a 1. So now let's start activating some switches here. So this is already happy because it was looking for a switch opening, and it sees that already. 
because this X1 hasn't been pressed down. If I press it down, you're going to see that that blue line goes away. Okay, so it's not happy now. Okay, so let's put it back there and it'll hit X0. So if you think about what's going to happen, this is going to go true, and so this whole top portion of the rung is going to go true. This should light up and write a 1 there, and should write a 1 there, and should write a 1 there. So then we'll be looking at this light and this light, or sorry, C1, lighting up. Oh, okay, made a first mistake. Let's switch this to run mode. If I don't switch it to run mode, nothing's going to happen. Okay, so now let's hit that. There we go. So we can see that Y0, our first input, or sorry, output, lit up. And it also activated in Roto 1 here, which activated a an output here in my internal bit. Let's get back to my simulator. Pop that up there. So you can see how that goes. If I hit X1 now, what do you think is going to happen? Well, this is going to go false and should shut everything off. Okay, so I open that up and now I have no true instruction going all the way through because this was looking for a zero, but the switch has been activated, so it's a one. So now let's see about X2. If I hit X2, so if I turn all three switches on, it should activate now. Okay, so very just a simple program there and you can see that you can use um, outputs as instructions at the beginning of the run as a normally open or a normally closed contact. You can have those activate an output here. And again, we could take this internal bit and put that down here to activate another light. So it's, uh, you know, there's a ton of options there. So it's just a little bit of some of the basic instructions you'll find with your Do More Designer. And I hope that helps for your next few uh, assignments.